Hey, I'm Lindsay Partridge and I wanted to do a video for you guys about safety because last week I did a video about teaching my horse to lie down and some people made some pretty good comments that it wouldn't be safe for somebody to just assume that they could take their horse out and do that. Mostly because I did a lot of things to help set that up for success for my horse so it was something that was appropriate for me to do. So I wanted to give you my take on safety. And for me, I don't really think there's any horse or activity that truly is safe with horses because horses are unpredictable by nature. They could get stung by a bee, they might trip and fall in a hole, or just stumble and fall down, and just because of their sheer size, that could make it unsafe, even a simple activity is just leading your horse. So I prefer to look at things as high risk or low risk based on my ability and my confidence, my horse's ability and their confidence and the environment around me to see if it's something that's appropriate for me to do or not. So for example, I've got three of my horses here lined up with their butts facing tomorrow towards me and you might think that's an unsafe activity but the reality is is that these are all of my level three, level four Pirelli horses and I've done so much desensitizing and confidence building with them that I can be back here behind them and have that not be upsetting for them and even to the point that I can pick up a, their tail and give them a little bit of pressure and they can understand to move backwards off of that. So this is an appropriate activity for me to do with these horses because they've learned to have confidence back here in what we call zone 5. So if we're thinking in absolute terms about activities that are low risk or high risk, I just want to take a moment to make the argument that a lot of natural horsemanship things that are seen as unsafe can actually be a lot less risky than things such as, I don't know, let's say low level eventing. Even if it's low level, they're jumping downhill or jumping into water and horses are more likely to trip, fall and stumble and things like that. Or let's say putting your horse on cross ties where they are strapped in so their only option is basically to fight out which is to kick or to bite so when you see me do something like where i've taught my horses to back up by a tail or i'm standing back here they're not contained at all in any way shape or form if they want to leave they have a clear out they can go forwards and they can leave normally when horses go to kick somebody it's because they feel like they have to fight their way. Horses are fight or flight creatures so by not having them tied up they've got an out and ability to go forwards. There isn't really a need to kick me or to strike back. So or something like let's say standing on a horse I would say there's no tack or equipment to get caught on. If you fall you just simply fall and hit the dirt. It's not like if you're cantering along and going down a hill or on a trail ride or something like that and your horse trips and falls and you might actually somersault over and actually hurt your horse. So in absolute terms I would actually say that a lot of the natural horsemanship type things we do like standing on our horses, standing behind our horses and getting them to go back are actually a lot less risky than activities that other people do all the time like trail riding, riding through water, jumping ditches and things like that just they're not maybe comfortable with the idea because they haven't learned how to do that. So when it comes to setting horses up for success and knowing whether your ability or your horse's ability are ready I just want to make the point that just because you can do one thing doesn't mean you're necessarily ready to do another. Let's take Ian Miller for example. Ian Miller can jump five feet he can jump five feet pretty darn easily on a whole bunch of different horses. Me, I can't jump five feet. I've never jumped that high in my life. The highest I've ever gone was four foot six, that was a couple years ago. And then I've really only just been doing meters or 1.1 with this horse, which is my highest jumping horse. It wouldn't be safe or low risk for me to just decide, hey, I'm gonna go try jumping five feet. That wouldn't work for me. Whereas for something that I can do, I can ride my horses bridleless over jumps. Just because Ian Miller can jump five feet, which is super impressive, doesn't mean he can jump with no bridle. Just because I can jump with no bridle, doesn't mean I can do jumping over five feet. But I can ride bridleless with this horse. I can ride this horse bareback and bridleless. I can jump this horse bridleless. But I'm not going to ride this horse bareback and bridleless because he's not trained for it yet. This is one of my brand new off the track thoroughbreds. This is my second time sitting on his back and that would be really high risk if I decided to take the bridle off right now because he's just not prepared and set up for success yet. And please, please wear a helmet. It doesn't matter how good your horse is or how good a rider you are, accidents can happen. Horses might trip and fall, so you fall, they might get stung by that bee and take off and run away. You just don't know. And here's the little bit of a nurse coming out in me. 
if you fall off and let's say you break your collarbone or you really hit your knee hard or something like that, sure it might be broken but it will probably heal okay in time, maybe with some scar tissue, maybe it won't move quite as well, but it will probably heal. If you fall off and hit your head, if you bruise your brain, that could be the difference between being paralyzed or not, or that could be the difference between remembering who you are or not. Brains just don't heal the same way. So wear a helmet, protect your head, you only get one. I ride with a helmet because quite a few years ago, before I came to Partridge Horse Hill, I was thrown off my horse and because I was a western rider, I didn't wear a helmet, uh, and I was knocked out. And um, it taught me a lesson that you should always wear a helmet, no matter what discipline you ride. <laughs> I ride in a helmet because I was out on a trail ride where a bunch of bumblebees scared all of our horses and if I hadn't held my helmet on I probably would have hit my head on a tree and I might not be here to talk about this right now.